why do you think uh, it's important to invest in employee learning and development? Well, I think in times of crisis, whether it be recession, you know, people are next to them on either side are losing their jobs or losing their homes, there's a little bit of security in knowing that your company's investing in you. And so there's a culture, it's a mindset, it's a, a sense of confidence that a CEO can give their employees to help build loyalty. Uh, and it's, it's inexpensive compared to the retraining and the rehiring and the losing people uh, side of the business. You know, to be able to invest in somebody a small amount of a few thousand dollars a year and keep them, keep them happy. We've seen so many surveys over the years where, you know, people don't leave because of money. They leave because they're not valued. And one of the reasons that you can help your employees stay, feel valued is to invest in them be it training, be it investing in their personal lives, providing daycare, you know, simple things like that. And I think those leaders that see that and that really understand how to commit to the people uh, of the organization, and yeah, it costs money. And there's some, you know, P&L stuff that has to be worked out. But at the same time, even a little bit at least shows I care. And there's a phrase that I've, I've heard over and over again that, you know, being listened to feels so much like being loved you can hardly tell the difference. And when an employee feels listened to or invested in, they feel much more loyal to the organization because they feel that somebody cares about them. Uh, welcome to another episode of CMA's uh, Hashtag HRTV. Hope you guys are doing great. Do you like my Ajiraya? Yes, yes, I love it. I love it <laughs> so much. But you know what, James? You look like Ajiraya. I look like the green screen. <laughs> you look like Harry Potter's. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd just show my face for the day, you know. <laughs> so, hi everyone. <laughs> if you're new here, this is a new learning for you because it's a new learning for me. I decided to come with a green jacket, green jacket, which has become the green screen. So, never do that. So, well, if you're new here, let me explain to you what HR Intervention is about. It's actually an online talk show where we interview HR and l and experts about everything related to HR, related to career. So if really you are a working person, then you're on the right show. Well, before we dive into a topic today, let me introduce myself. I am Shireen from Compass Mind Asia. And over there in blue, our blue Smurf is... is, Smurf is I'm James Sassi, Senior Manager of Learning and Development, and this is HR Intervention Episode 5. believe it we've actually reached to episode five and it's fifth of may and actually it just feels that like we just got started on episode one isn't it but i must right. say in all the five episodes today you look the most handsome james <laughs> you, know, you all in your budget wire all prepared and i know right i've got the button all that and the blue color really does bring out the best in me. Shireen, we're at episode five on the 5th of May. Hopefully this will be our lucky week where we'll make no mistakes at all. Well, may the 5th be with you. Oh yeah, may, may the 5th be with you. Well, the first is going down the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome guys. 
I want to see who's in the house. I know we've got few, uh, quite a few of you in the house, as I can see over my phone. Hello. Uh, I see you. Welcome so back. lovely to meet you. If you can hear us, please uh, put a hi and share your thoughts about the videos that we put up just now. You know, it'd be really nice to share, especially I love the training video where it was, you know, the way you, when you make training so much fun, it's, it retains in the mind longer. So, and if you have any questions at all along the way, please put it in the comment section below. Hi, Eliana. Hi, and Hanisa, Doris Money. Yes, yeah, Siti Haniza. And if you're a newbie, please type out hashtag newbie and which part of the world are you from? Because there we have been having people from US, from Dubai, from India, from Myanmar, from Cambodia, from Singapore, and we don't even know. Eventually, they said good show, and then that's where we go. Oh, you were on? Last week, we had somebody from Bangladesh, Shireen. Oh, yeah. Last week was from Bangladesh. Episode 2 was a lot from US. So let us know if you're newbie, hashtag newbie, where you're from. If you are all here, if we've seen you before, welcome back. Just say hi, and let us know also where are you from. Are you affected by the MCO 3.0 or you're not? Okay, Shireen, as always, shall we comment a bit on the video at the beginning of our show? Usually, Nina prepared for us some fun movie clips that are related to the topic, right, Shireen? Yes. But this week, she's being a bit serious by playing for us a rather serious but informative video. Exactly. And you know what? She <laughs> is that, Nina. <laughs> right <laughs> and you know what she's actually yeah right ca newbie okay hi Meyer agrawal you look from like you're from india good morning yes from the other part of the world uh, it's hi, lunchtime so here bro yeah hi audrey uh, uh what was i going to say oh my goodness yeah nina's on mc today and i'm so sad yeah. but i hope you uh, go well nina yeah any guys if you all wonder who nina is nina is our back end who really helps out uh, together with another guy called Faiz. so Faiz is here helping us today so after all the taglines is serious discussions only right jane so sometimes i think it's okay okay to get a little bit serious once in a while not so that often right mm. me too you know um i love the last part where the guy said this is why we have training. <laughs> we start with a dummy and we learn from our mistakes. And now Dwight knows not to cut the face of a real person. <laughs> Can you imagine if this was a real situation and there was, and then you lose your face? <laughs> I mean, that is so funny, but jokes aside, right, it does highlight a point that is how important training is. I should know, you should know. I've been in this industry for more than 20 years. So have you. Hey, you can't say that. You will be revealing, revealing my age. Shh. Uh, and it will be all right, James. And that's why we actually pay attention to the most serious video that was highlighted earlier. It's so important to invest in training. Um, well, it's always important to invest in training because it's also valuing your people. And on top of that, we need to know about training programs in the new area, a new era, right? Well, if we don't keep abreast with what's happening, then that's going to be really bad. And you know what, James? I'm getting a little bit distracted because Sabrina says, James, you look good in Baju Melayu. I thought, uh, Maria. <laughs> so unfair. So who are who, uh, how many of you are actually fasting and uh, actually upset that you can't balik kampung for Raya? Let us know. Like uh, Iliana has mentioned, affected by MCO, can't go back to my hometown for Raya. I'm so sorry, Iliana. I'm sure many of you are also affected. Isn't it? Let us know. Let us know. Let, let us support each other. Why not? Isn't it? 
hey, as long as you have access to ketupat, lemang, or the kuih raya, it doesn't matter where you are, makan je. Oh, I'm coming to your house. I'm sure you're mm-hmm. having I only have chewing gum. Oops, hide the brand. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, hmm, do you want to introduce our speaker for today, James? Yes, Edward Chan Y. Hall, learning and development specialist. Whoa, whoa. I whoa. love people in the industry. Oh, yeah, me too. Anyway, Edward. He's a learning and development specialist in one of the biggest mobile device companies in Asia. Edward used to be a trainer, a facilitator, a coach, and he's an expert in psychological test assessors, specializing in positive psychology and coaching psychology. Are you all the psychology, psychology stuff? You're probably going to read inside my brain already. <laughs> oh, that is impressive. Edward, welcome. Hello, welcome. everybody. Hello, everyone that's watching. First of all, Shireen, I don't read minds or else I would have wear, you know, no one tell me about the dress code. I would have wear my peach or pink, whatever, on the spectrum of the color. <laughs> well, you, you are lucky you didn't follow me because I ended up with a t-shirt because of the green screen. We all didn't read James' mind to come with Baju Raya, right? That's but how then again, I have, to to tell the, I have to tell the editors, uh, end of the year, please do not expect me to come up like uh, Santa Claus. Huh? Please, huh? please. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that will match you perfectly well, James, I think, with a white beard. Anyway, back to our guest, Shireen. That oh, is impressive, Edward. Seriously impressive. Uh, but, you know, last week we had a uh, discount for car. Can we get discount if you want to purchase phones from your company? <laughs> oh, well, I always tell people there's always a long waiting queue, so you have to fill up the Borang A, Borang B, you know, photo set I, see photo set passport. Regardless how, just go PM to PM me. I think, uh, I think I will share. Sorry? Anyway, discount codes, if any. Well, do. <laughs> James is being very cheeky, I tell you. By the way, did you manage to watch the pre-show video, Edward? Well, from the serious discussion video, right? The most serious one. I believe you're going to explain to us further after this. But um, briefly speaking, what is actually your opinion on the office clip, the first clip? Maybe we should should let uh, Edward uh, introduce himself. Let us find out who he is and... Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Thanks, <laughs> nice, James. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, hi, Mario. Hi, Clarice. Uh, my name is Edward. So I've been in the L&D for the longest time. I uh, have the privilege to be both the in-house trainer and also as the freelance trainer, also an external consultant as well. So uh, so like a lot of millenniums, uh, people will call us like a job hoppers, but I make that a conscious uh, decision. So I always joke about, you know, my... My my career started from being a gymnastic coach. So wow, wow. really, I mean that the word coach comes striking me and right. So my youngest coachy is only like what six months old, baby, like six wow. months old, learning how to you know balance themselves on the beams, you know, tiptoe, very cute. Uh, of course, wow. I have the experience uh, training multiple industry as well, uh, mainly on the hospitality point of view, and now focusing a bit more on the soft skill, precisely, uh, exclusively on positive psychology related and coaching related topics. But yes, I don't read minds. <laughs> Hi, Audrey. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think no, I'm no, not, not reading. Okay. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> You can read me now. Great answer. No, okay. No. Okay. <laughs> hi, Arina. Hi, Shobhan. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Rajinder. Uh, well, so, uh, Edward, what is your... Let me ask you, again, what's your opinion on the first video, the office clip? What do you think about it? Uh, first of all, I'm glad that uh, I get to experience anything like that before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't want them to be in my class, okay? But I probably want to see from a different perspective as well in terms of how engaging that particular session is, you know. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. as, as a trainer or as someone that's doing uh, facilitations, you know, if you have a group of them 
singing, enjoying themselves and exploring as well. That would be good. So in, in any essence, right, training, suppose training sessions or in this type of one or two days training, it's all about having the platform for them to experience things, you know. I always think that at this moment in uh, in our civilization, or such a big word, uh, information is never in a lack, you know. We can just Google things. So it was never the hardest thing for people to know exactly what is, for example, positive psychology about leadership, uh, leadership management skills and whatnot i think that's the reason why the topic is about training redefined whereby how us in the training industry or in-house trainer in-house l d person would want to create that platform for people to practice it or experience that instead of just feeding them like buffet where you take as many information as possible you know, the best practice for conveying effective learning to employees are continually changing and getting your training program right is more significant now than ever. Employees today expect training and development to not only happen during onboarding, but beyond that. And they expect it to be delivered through modern practical methods and applications. Exactly, exactly, James. What do you and think, James? me as uh, training providers too, we always have to keep abreast of what's happening and using the best strategies. If not, you become a dinosaur and then people don't relate to you anymore. You see how fast things actually change. So really, we have to keep abreast to today's best strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you guys are right. But sorry. on top of that... Sorry, yeah. James. I mean, but... On top of that uh, revolutionized industry where almost uh, everything is done digitally, we need to uh, we need to also bear in mind the fact that we are still living in pandemic era. Oh my God! Yes. Anyway, Edward, before we move on to the questions with you, let's ask our audience a question. Okay, which one of you have attended the tra uh, trainings in the past three months? Let us know what program you've gone for and was it an online or a face to face we love to know what are the trainings you have attended in the last three months and was it online or a face to face session put it in the comment below so are you ready because we've got lots of questions for edward so let's go now <laughs> i'm ready i'm ready <laughs> <You're> ready yeah <laughs> james <laughs> Me? What? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. So, I myself also in L&D, and Shireen here is a training provider herself. But uh, perhaps you would like to share with uh, our audience, what is employee training and what is it for? Uh, from my own personal opinion, right, or my personal definition, I think employee training is all about... Um, providing enough knowledge, skills, or information for people to perform well in their respective industry. I know it sounds very cliche, uh, but uh, it all of us will probably know at this moment, your degree will only be a ticket for you to enter, you know. As you're climbing up the, uh, the corporate ladder, it's no longer your degree that counts. So people are talking about experience, people are talking about what kind of project have you done before. And a lot of times, right, these are definitely not in your textbook. Uh, your case study will not work. And that's the reason why employee training is a sustainable uh, methodology for me, uh, at least in my own opinion, that constantly upgrading your so for your people's software in order to match whatever company's objective. I like that people's software. Really. <laughs> reprogramming. reprogramming here and reprogramming here, isn't it? You are what absolutely you right. Mind? You're absolutely right. Uh, in, yeah. in fact, a lot of times, you know, uh, a lot of people will see training and only on a technical skill. In fact, I was attending a Excel training yesterday. It was mind blowing. It's absolutely new for me. But I think, uh, especially during this pandemic, uh, people start to pay a bit more attention on soft skill as well. You're talking about resilience. You're talking about uh, stress management. Uh, people start to be a bit more empathetic when working from home, you know. Uh, uh, I was doing coaching last year when the first MCO uh, started. So they were telling me that, you know, working from home is even worse. Not everyone yeah. thought that working from home is cool, you know, like, oh, I can go to hippie cafes and whatnot and do do my laundry while waiting for a meeting and whatnot. Not really, you know. Uh, the time has been really blurred. Uh, people has been working yeah. actually nine to nine, you know. Uh, 
And, and interesting enough, right, uh, a lot of people only focus on the work performance. Uh, the main thing they have in mind when you're working from home is that are you able to deliver what you're supposed to deliver when working on office? Uh, but people do not talk about, you know, uh, how are you, you know, do you have the enough tools, resources? Do you know how to use Zoom account to begin with? So those are the things that also should be in the training, employee training. Exactly. Talking about nine to nine, I'm a seven to nine. James Laura. <laughs> seven to forever. <laughs> he never sleeps. Then how do you wake up? See the black panda eyes. Oh, you know, uh, you're right. It's like, it's like you know, I, I keep telling my staff, it's like, you know, when I go into the office, I'm less busy than I am in the house because exactly. it's before you know it, it's already 12. And before you know it, it's already five. And you don't know where the time has gone. And there's still so much left to do. You are right. Know, crazy. Especially, anyway. especially the meeting as well. Don't you realize that when you're working off, off uh, online, right? There's so many meetings, you know. Usually, you can just walk to someone else's cubicle and just settle it in five minutes. Now, you are going like, to set another meeting. So much work, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, mean, I, I, I want to ask you. Mm. Um, you know, some companies they have their own trainers in house L and D. Correct. Uh, where the L and D does their own training. What are some of the challenges do you say that they face to train their own employees? Because uh, somehow sometimes people get very complacent with their colleagues, right? It becomes a colleague <laughs> anyway. So, what are the challenges you think? I think I think let's speak from two particular perspectives, from the R&D department perspective and also from the uh, the whole company culture perspective. Uh, of course, first of all, whether or not the company supports learning culture, uh, you will talk to a lot of GMs and all the stakeholders or even the HR directors that says that, oh, no, training for us is very important, it's very important, but uh, um, action sometimes speak louder than words <laughs> i mean this is something serious discussion i would really want to challenge certain hr directors as well uh of course uh their policies or even uh how how they the whole system how much they do they encourage training i mean uh i think shereen and james probably understand you know you have people coming in and out in a training knowing that they have meetings in between and then the bosses summon them out again then come in again in and out so they bring so their laptops with them they open exactly. it and they're busy you know, exactly. in their meetings while the training exactly. is going on. Exactly. So uh, I, I think the biggest difference between companies who really cultivate and encourage learning culture are the ones who say that, look, uh, whatever that you need to do, okay, uh, do it later during lunch and whatever not, uh, really focus on this session because it's only a day or sometimes nowadays it's only half a day. Uh, that will be from the company perspective. Uh, of course, from the department perspective, we need L&D always in a department whereby we are always the one who spends money. You know, people always wonder, mm, what's my ROI, you know, putting into uh, putting into training, you know? For example, in the office video, uh, instead of ROI, you are actually, you know, losing another 3.5K just because of that dummy, you know? And that it's, to be honest to you, it's very hard to measure. Uh, even for sales training, for example, a lot of people will say that sales training will be easy, you know, after having this, uh, sales training uh, program, you know, the sales shoot up. But I, again, I'll be curious whether or not there will be so many other variables, you know. Uh, also, um, the trainer itself, are they equipped with a lot of technical skills, especially in this time for MCO? Uh, some of them are still using uh, uh, very traditional, especially because it's online. So they were always think that it's only one way communication. So a couple last week, I was doing the online training on one of the quite serious topic that uh, is on self awareness and motivation at work online. You know, uh, usually when you hear about motivation, it's always about hoo hoo ha ha. So how do you still duplicate that kind of effect? Uh, on the online. So it's something that people really have to think about. And these are all a challenge for all the LNDs uh, professionals out there. Exactly. It's, exactly. it's you know, it's, it's amazing that you brought that up. I mean, do you do you agree that not, not all kinds of training are meant for everyone and that training has to be customized according to individual needs? What do you think? Very good question, James. I, I think uh, every uh, I think the first level is of course the willingness and the motivation for them to want to learn. Because uh, let's just be fair as well. There's a lot of class uh, whereby participants is either forced to join, 
or be very frank here, forced to join, or they probably don't even know what they sign up for. You know, you know, in, in my training, the first thing I always ask, uh, I'm okay, are you guys in the right class just in case, you know, okay, you can still bail yourself out if you need to. Uh, so uh, that would be the first level. And of course, I do understand that there will be, I don't think it's different classes for different people. I think it will be the same classes with different levels. So for example, you know, even Excel, you have basics, advanced or intermediate. So you still need that skill. It's just whether or not you need so much of that skill. And that's when talent management will come in with the competency dictionary and whatnot. So no point training someone to, you know, go all the way to level five where they wouldn't even practice that, you know. You're right. So really customization, I am so for it. That's where when I speak to my clients, I go deep and deep and deep and deep and deep until I get to the root cause of, hey, why do you need this, man? Because sometimes exactly. you don't know and it's just I need to spend the budget. So when you go, even to spend the budget, there has to be a good reason of why you're going to spend the budget and make it of value. So we're very particular on that. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Clarice. Clarice says, I think Clarice is answering to the 9 to 9 that you mentioned. <laughs> you the as well. While you sleep. Hi, Chao. <laughs> that is really funny, actually. For mm. those who have just joined us, today we are talking about training redefined. So another question for you, Edward. You mm. know that different generations are uh, now in the marketplace and their learning is uh, different. Some prefer very very kahoot, you know, very MTV, very fast going. And by the end of the training, it's like, huh? Training over. Uh. And then there are some individuals who prefer the most serious, uh, like get to the point, give me the serious stuff, give me the nuggets and I'm, I'm leaving. Right? <laughs> what are your thoughts? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, especially I notice C levels. It's like, don't cut the crap. Give me the real meat. I want that. Yeah. Mm. What are your thoughts about the different generations uh, learning styles? That's a very good one. I, I think Shireen has shared about customization. In, in fact, a lot of time, it's not just about com, uh, content customization. Uh, I also particularly very believe in customization is uh, in example and case study. So I have uh, experience before doing training for the same topic, you know, on resilience to multiple groups of people. You have the, uh, the young talents, like the one and graduates. I've done it internally as well for, uh, for our management trainees and also done it for senior managers, you know. So the content could be very much similar, but you as a facilitator, right, you always know that, you know, how much can you give at this moment and how much can you trigger them to ask questions? You always come in with maybe 100% of that content or the knowledge on the content as a subject matter expert. So uh, for and the examples of the case study should be related to them. For example, with the management trainees, right? My examples on deliberate practice is actually on uh, on sports, you know, uh, on footballs, on uh, basketballs or even in esports, you know, playing uh, PUBG, the Dotas and whatnot. So those are the stories that they can relate to because in the end, the training is only effective if they learn something. So this is something that uh, as a trainer or l and professional, uh, because we know so many things, you know, and to be honest, right, our content, right, people could just Google it. It's at this moment, it's not the hardest thing to get. Uh, but that's the reason why as a facilitator, we want to facilitate using that platform to ensure that they could practice and relate that to them. Because in the end, they are the one who's going to leave the room and continue to inspire to learn and also practice that particular skill. Exactly. Yeah, that's so true. Hello, uh, uh, sorry, where are you from? Yeah, Mahita. Mahita. Yeah. Hi, everybody. So, <laughs> guys, if you are uh, for the audience, if you guys have any questions for Edward at all, please put it up in the comment because then he can answer your questions. And I've got one question for the audience. Mm. Uh, what is the biggest challenges that you as a participant have faced for online training? Is it too long hours? Is it boring? <laughs> is it too factual? What is it that you have faced before? You know, share with us because then we know your experience from attending training online. Sitting down to 
then it's like, I want to sleep. Where's my food? And then half, half the time, go to the kitchen, open the, the fridge, you know. Yes. A lot of the times, uh, most of the participants look forward to the breaks. You know, what's there for lunch, what's there for tea. They look forward to the breaks and like, hey, it's time for break, you know. But then when you go on online training, um, there is no break. You have to find your own food. Yeah, but, and, and but, somehow food is perks of training also considered. So now it's well, like... Of course, on the online training, is actually very hard for them to maintain that, that kind of composure. I, I think it's equally hard for both the trainers and also the, the trainees to be in the room for like an hour or some of them wanted like a full day online training. I, I'm like, human, we are not designed for that, man. <laughs> and you know, the worst is when you have this, when you have the video up, uh, you can't right, see the button. Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, hello, who am I talking to? Who is James? <laughs> you, know, you can hear me? Yeah, or oh, you spend half of the time, hi, hi, can you guys unmute yourself, please? Unmute yourself, please. Can uh, you guys hear? You guys hear, you know? Uh, I feel like a more like a radio DJ than a trainer during that time. It's like me talking and like, should I play some music? You know what I mean? I'm like, can I get some SMS or WhatsApp coming in too? You know? So that, that's a challenge, definitely a challenge for the trainers. Yeah, but, ba uh, but, boredom as well. I mean, Shireen, you are right. I mean, the, the, the questions, um, you know, the, is it the long hours of training? That's why some uh, online trainings are shortened, yeah? Uh, they have um, webinars, which is quite short, like half a, half a day or perhaps one hour, etc. cetera. Um, you know, um, um, Edward, mm. training and, and, and learning are codependent, right? When there's right. training, there's definitely or should be a learning process or else what's the point right can you elaborate on the difference between training and learning because this is something that i am always fascinated about uh, as a trainer myself you know people come in and i'm so enthusiastic to just you know impart into them all that i know with all the activities that make sense and hope that they take something away okay. so what 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 What's your take on this training and learning? Well, my personal opinion, right? Uh, the definition to me is always very clear. The training itself is the whole process uh, or the sessions where you are equipping someone with a skill to, to facilitate their task to enhance their work performance. So it's all about knowledge transfer. Uh, uh, that's why in, in product knowledge training, it's always called product knowledge training, the SOP training. It's always not about SOP learning. So it's always, uh, I personally see that as training, right? It's always usually like a mentor sharing a lot of information for them. So it's pretty much on that side, you know, really learn uh, training, training per se. Uh, learning how I, I see in a bigger, wholesome perspective, I uh, always see learning as how you can inspire someone to continue to enhance the skill after the session. Okay, so training is what happens in the session when learning should be what happens after the session. Let's just be frank, right? Uh, a a one-day training or two days training uh, it won't significantly change someone's life. Of course, you uh, as a trainer, we are very positive. Uh, we feel grateful that uh, we are impacting certain people in uh, in our sector, uh, in our whole career, you know. But uh, if we could uh, inspire them to say that, you know, I'm really curious with this topic. I want to learn more about this topic, you know. I've been experiencing, uh, I've been practicing what. I think that's on the learning side. Because after two days, uh, what I can do is just to unlock that awareness to you that you can, you know, where you can continue to practice and where can you continue to learn. And you're up on your own, you know, and that's the reason why Shireen was mentioning about level one, level two, level three. So after level one, where the awareness is there, people start to get excited with a particular topic, inspired by learning uh, this topic, they come back again. So training is like a petrol station to me, while the learning will probably be the journey to go towards the end. Fantastic. Nice. I really like your answer. Uh, for me, right, learning starts once the two-day training is actually over. Because like you said, it is the after, how they apply it. And guys, did you guys know, uh, I have got some figures here from the training, uh, the Association of Talent Development, that 95% of people, they think that they enjoy the training. All right, but 
percent of them refer back to their learning materials. Another thirteen percent applies what they learn. However, only three percent of the training actually brings ROI to the company. That's actually so sad. It's so low uh, an amount. Um, Edward, why do you think trainings fail? After you answer, I want to bring in Kirk Patrick later because I think <laughs> <graduation. laughs> Because, you know, when you talk about level one, level two, level three, level four, Kirkpatrick, way a, a long time ago in the Industrial Revolution, came up with this uh, different levels of uh, learning. You know, it makes me feel sad when you say that, Shireen, as a trainer who has put in, you know, hours and hours improving my training materials to learn that 3% of training reached a level where the organization felt an impact it's very very sad yeah so why why edward do trainings because three percent is very low it's considered failed so why do trainings fail in organizations why do you think what can yeah, be done you know <laughs> i think everyone will probably have the same question as well you know this is a million dollar for l and d like if you can come in to a proposal and say that look we can ensure you that we can increase our right to xx amount of the training i think that's a million dollar uh uh, answer and should be told right i don't have a specific answer to that you know uh, i always believe that l and d is supposed to be very flexible i i was having a conversation with hr director recently and uh he redefines the training uh or, or l and d uh roi in terms of us as the l and d department our goal is to support the company's objective and making sure that uh, our people are able to reach that objective. So for example, if you want to hit X amount of, uh, for example, uh, let's just make it simple, sales, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's when us coming in as an L&D person to break down that, okay, so what kind of support do you guys need from a training or from a learning development perspective? And that's the reason why it's l and It's not always just about the learning part or the training part, it's also about development. And that's the reason I always believe that the journey is very important like what shireen said you know learning starts after the session if you really were to ask me uh i think a lot of lnd person comes in from the sake uh sometimes really for the sake of doing training uh for the sake of doing training you know uh when we measure what kind of measurement are we measuring i mean lnd departments kpi are usually total hours of training oh how many hours a trainer do training but we are not measuring in any way the results, you know, uh, and we are not collecting enough data. I, I mean, data freak guy, right? I don't think we are collecting enough data. And, and frank, to be true, the easiest data to collect, right, is basically the happy score, the evaluation score after that, you know, uh, out of 1 to 10, out to 5, but like, oh, 4.9. So you can go around and say that I'm, I'm a good trainer. I'm a good trainer, you know. People love me. So I always say that those are happy scores. La, you know, people love you. La. But in the end, that's the reason why there's always a gap between the, the top management and comes to L and D. And sometimes it's sad to say that L and D needed more time to 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 prove our effectiveness after the training. And that's the reason why I always believe it's a journey, you know, and that links back to the company culture, to how important do they see that? Or probably a bigger picture would be like a country. Uh, a less developed country will probably spend less on education because kids, sorry to say, I mean, uh, we um, I mean, we can't even feed the family. So kids, can you just, you know, be a labor? I mean, child labor is definitely not something that uh, is good, but however you want to survive, you know, company will probably have that mindset as well. Just go do whatever we need to do, you know, uh, instead of, okay, kids, sit down here, be in that, we invest a couple of years, maybe a year or six months or three years or five years just to see that. So companies sometimes don't see long term and I can't blame them, you know, because it's so long term. Probably the CEO would have already changed to a different company or moved to a different company, you know. And of course, at this moment in time, people want instant result. And that is something that uh, LND would all of us, including uh, I think the, all the audience as well, will probably struggle really with that. Yeah. I mean, Edward, so what, what can we do to ensure that these trainings are effective? I mean, what can we do? 
Uh, I will always see that as um, L&D should come in from a strategic perspective. So in any strategic meeting on a board meeting, we definitely should be there. Now, HR is always there from the HR strategic perspective on the people side, you know, in terms of the recruitment, uh, the compensations or, or, or the retention. But people do not measure L&D in a sense that, yes, uh, why don't we have like a, you know, last year, uh, working performance, do we have a, a, a numbers or do we have certain uh, assessment to test or do a pre-test and a post-test, you know, uh, a year before and year after X amount of money being spent, how much does it increase our revenue? Uh, I, I still think that that kind of meeting is the one that L&D should be inside the room. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of times in this type of strategy decisions making, right, and it's definitely not inside. Mm. Yeah. That's true. That's really, really true. Um, hi, Renuka. Thanks for coming on board. You know, uh, Edward, just now you mentioned... Hi, Jenny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mentioned just now instant results. People want instant results. Companies want instant results. Mm. Instant, instant noodles kills you, so instant results also... <laughs> <Baba won't kill. laughs> I, I'm not sure whether it kills me or not, yeah, but some it people like hair. instant noodles, okay? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you instant noodles? Uh, come and give you all a talk after this, man. I'm so <laughs> yeah, yeah. conscious. Okay. Oh, well, we, we better hope no instant noodle company is going to be interviewed. But if they yep. hear this and you want to be interviewed, I'm more than happy to have you on board. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Edward, you know, um, I know you are an expert in uh, training, learning audits. Can you explain the process? How uh, learning audit should be done uh mm. yes it's something that i always try to advocate but again the journey is a very long journey so hear me out okay uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times when uh, uh a lot of times l and struggle to defend ourselves in terms of how much why should the company invest on us or why should the talent invest time in that particular whole journey is that we don't have that data to support uh we like what you say, you know, Shereen, uh, people want instant, immediate ones. So uh, they always go for training that, you know, uh, that can see that immediately people are very engaged, you know. That's the reason why people will probably say that, you know, uh, sitting down and having like a one-month program or six-month program is not something they'll look for. Uh, probably just go for a two-day training. Let's uh, let's build a sandcastle. Let's go for a resort, you know. Uh, everyone going to get happy, you know. Everyone going to high, rah, 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 and then come back. I think that plays a part in the whole journey, but it shouldn't be the only part in the whole journey. So the audit comes in in the sense that uh, it's supposed to be a framework in terms of how you learn. So we always have a pre-test, post-test. For example, the pre-test will be, okay, so the company's ideology, what are we going to try to achieve this year? And what's the gap in between? That's when HR always uh, comes along, you know, knowing the gap, the competency gap. So a lot of work, okay, yeah. hear me out, okay. <laughs> and knowing the fact that how can we uh, raise the bar maybe from a five to a six. Let's don't go yeah. for the highest, you know. A lot of companies will say that we want our people to be the best people, you know. I um, mean, throwing back to an example in a war, right, probably half of the people are probably, you know, normal soldiers were probably getting brooms or probably getting some uh, rusty knife to go to war, you know. So that's when the general comes in. And how do they deliver the message so that everyone, let's have this target, okay. And learning mm -hmm. should be the way uh, in that analogy will be equipping them with the right armor, the suit, how do they run around, how do they retreat, how do they go offense, how do they listen to the drums and what not to follow. So audit is the one that you come to result. I mean, war time is easy. You know what I mean? Okay, you know whether you win or lose. But in a learning perspective, right, people or most of the companies, in, including some of uh, my previous client as well, was struggling to understand the fact that, okay, I'm going to put 100K, I'm going to wait one year to see results, okay? And so audit is the one that will comes in from a pre-test post-step perspective, uh, cut into quarters. I always say that every single quarter uh, should be fine. And a lot of times that uh, this kind of trainings, right, we only do post-tests. So we already know for example, you know, you, you have a kid that learns standard one math 
of course, I want to check the baseline. You know, are you starting from three? Are you starting from four? Or but now you know that everyone starts from six. So there's no comparison. The pretest is the one that's missing on the audit. And also after the I mean, training. Um... Yeah, sorry, yes, go ahead, Edward. Go sorry, ahead. sorry. And and the audit is yeah, the one good. that will count all this, you know, uh, the whole process. Uh, then by the end of the year, you can actually generate a report, you know, uh, after X amount. And the report or the audit on quarterly basis actually helps us to pivot as well. So sometimes you realize that, hey, actually our people, our talents are, are way more competent than we think, you know. So as an L&D person, we would want to change our content. So that kind of pre-test, post-test is the auditing part that I think a lot of times, a lot of companies are not doing that enough. Who is supposed to do that pre-test, post-test? I would definitely believe it comes from the L&D. L&D should lead that. And yes. of course, uh, we we have multiple, multiple, uh, uh, I would say connections with other departments as well. For example, uh, in, in a company itself, there will be people who really needed more technical skill as compared to the soft skills, mm -hmm. you know, the, the finance team, for example, the supply chain, for example, the retail team, for example, they will probably want to learn technical or what we call the hard skill. So these are skills or these are the assessments that to be honest will, might be easier to measure. But how about engagement, you know, soft skills. After, after let's just say that after a policy psychology related training on stress management, how would I know my people are better handling stress? And that is something that to be honest, it's harder to measure. Is it it's measurable? True. I mean, when you Mm. That's my question exactly because mm. you know as as a trainer myself uh, when I uh, in in my previous companies when I develop a training specifically for my company mm. um, I always put in this uh, what is your knowledge before and what is your knowledge now that I have conducted the training um, not only to assess myself whether the, the, the training that I had conducted had created the impact that I expected to. Mm -hmm. um, that is number one. Number two, whether my participants are taking more than just 3% of knowledge out of the door when they go out into their departments where they are supposed to create these changes. So the knowledge they had before they came in, the knowledge that I equipped them while they are in my training room, and then what they take out and practice and continue to practice. So, you know, as LND people, we cannot be out there to measure what happens uh, outside. That would be for the managers, the line managers, etc., to come and feed back to us and say, hey, look, your training was really great. You know, it's impacted our, our, our you know, finance, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's true, I mean, what measurement is the right measurement? Wow, that's a good question. There's no, there's no one absolute answer to that. If you were to ask me, it really goes back to the company objective, and hence the reason why I always emphasize the importance of the L and D uh, hate to be in the strategy meeting. So for mm -hmm. example, whatever company is trying to achieve, let's for example, we have five objectives by the end of the year, and should that kind of momentum has been built towards the beginning of the year and towards the uh, till the end of the year because of L&D department, that will be a really good success. Uh, I think it's a good victory even for all in L&Ds. But I also want to put from a different perspective as well, uh, doing this audit, right, it will obviously challenge us and the L&D department because if you were to just stop at the happy scores on Kirkpatrick level one, right, uh, yeah. well, we all hit our KPIs, you know what I mean? Why would we want to do a post test to and to to back, probably backfire ourselves? You know, so that's something that an L and D person will probably have to think about. Do you want to open this Pandora box? Because you are just giving you literally supplying bullets for people to say that look at. I think after your training, right, my people remains the same, right? So maybe I would not want to spend so much time and effort into your training in future. So that make us buckle up uh, to to go back to the drawing board and coming again, okay, what's really the objective by the end of the session, right? What should people get? So I always ask myself, okay, this particular question uh, sounds rude or this, I'm gonna excuse my French. 
why the hell that people should be in your session? <laughs> Because it's a time for them, you know, it's a one day, two days training for them. Uh, why should they be there? You know, uh, really. So if by the end of the session, when they leave, they say that, yeah, I actually learned something that I can practice immediately, that will be a win. So even in my training, uh, a lot of times when we are doing crafting a uh, training objective or learning objective, right? Uh, my personal suggestion is that it's an extra work, but do send another Google Sheet or Google Doc to the participants to ask them, you know, uh, what would what would you really want to learn? You know, what would be great uh, for you? Uh, or what do you, by the end of the session, what were you expecting, you know? I, I think some of my better session, the one that uh, both the participants are happy and also their line managers are happy, it's when you only ask that question before the training. So when you come in, right, you don't shock Sindiri, you know, you, you probably want to, uh, no, seriously, I mean, L&D, sometimes we shocks and deal with a lot of things that we were like, oh, this must be the best thing, you know. I happened to present once on eight, uh, Seven Habits, you know, uh, telling people that how wonderful Seven Habits is, how it changed my life as, you know, as an individual. But I realized that after the training, half of the people can't relate to it. Mm. That's when I realized that, you know, at this moment, at this time, this is not the content that they need, you know. Uh, they are uh, the target audience are, are, are on the on on the lower uh, lower side of the hierarchy where they are just trying to survive at this moment. I'm not talking about thriving at this moment. So this is something that I realized that oh, I've been shocked Sandiri throughout my whole one month, you know, trying to do this to multiple session, and when that interview question is being asked in the beginning of session. So they'll tell you that, oh, Ed, I actually prefer a lot more case study in terms of how, you know, successful uh, transition in terms of culture. So, you know, and you're able to prepare better content for them. Uh, I think that's very important. We are the facilitator. I mean, we can go on and all about this training as well. Uh, I mean, so we drill down. Even, yeah, so much to talk about. And this one hour is just not enough. We can even talk about the training providers themselves. Because when, when a training provider comes to me, I drill down. I say, look, you need to meet my objective, not take something off the shelf and, and reproduce it. Like what you reproduced it to company A, B, and C. I'm not company A, B, and C. Sorry, I've got a different objective to, uh, to achieve. Then again, you know, the change of the working environment aligning with the pandemic will definitely affect the training industry, right? So, um, you know, before we conclude, what is your prediction of the training industry for the next six months? Wow. Prediction. Absolutely. To, to begin with, I don't read minds now. You asked me to predict. <laughs> uh, I personally feel that uh, learning will be easier to assess. So all the multiple open uh, online learning source will, the Coursera's, the Udemy's, the uh, the TEDx will be more easily accessible for people. And the it's more visible. Yeah, yeah, and it's also more visible to people as well, you know, uh, because previously people will not see that. Uh, I think a big change uh, probably by the end of this year is that uh, certain company will started to pay more attention towards uh, online certification, meaning it's no longer, uh, so when you have it on, you know, your LinkedIn learning uh, certification, when you have your Coursera on the certifications on your LinkedIn, right? I think somehow it started to carry more weight. You know, people started to believe that, you know, it's still a legit content, you know, people pe people spend hours and it's hard to actually pay attention online. Uh, I, I have to admit that uh, sometimes it's a hit and miss for me as well. Yeah. And the statistics actually shows that, you know, it's, very low it's only 15 percent of people actually completed the whole whatever coursera course or udemy course you know yes. uh, that will be my prediction uh prediction, prediction. <laughs> prediction. <laughs> i think it will be very safe my words okay uh, i think the second one will be uh, a lot of trainer has been focusing a lot on face-to-face -face, focusing a lot on the Kirkpatrick level one you know people the if someone come back to you and say, oh, I love your training. It's so engaging and so fun, right? As an L&D person, I'll be very conscious, you know, that shouldn't be the only measurement. So when you take that out from face to face, now you're going to online, uh, certain trainer will start to come in and say that, hmm, how can I still maintain that kind of um, engagement? Uh, I, I've been doing trainings uh, online since a couple of years ago. So uh, remember the self-awareness and the self-motivation. So I was introducing something, not even, uh, I think you all could be very familiar with Johari Windows. Yeah. So how do we do Johari Windows, right? Instead, Previously, I was doing face-to-face -face using Sticky Pad, 
So I'll go around, you know, everyone write down whatever you feel about someone else's strengths and whatnot. You go stick around, people having fun and whatnot. But how do you still get that objective and that, um, I would say not impact, but the objective of the learning through online. So I do pretty much the same thing, but using uh, Excel, you know, Google Excel sheet. So people mm. still go around to different tabs and typing up. They, they will still put in their respective Johari windows and whatnot. Then I put them into a breakout rooms and have that kind of conversation. One of the biggest uh, danger that uh, online trainings that we, we have, right? It's always about, uh, okay, how do we make them happy? How do we make mm. them engage? So when I was thinking about that, right? I I was used, I, I was in my house rules, right? I'm, I'm telling people that, you know, bring your food along, you know? Bring your snacks, you know, bring your pillows, you know, because it's impossible for you to sit here for four hours being like that, you know. So, yes, exactly. And you will definitely anticipate that people will be uh, off track, you know, exactly. And I always have this time of rules that every single 15 minutes on uh, online training, you should have at least an activity or questions that trigger conversation. So it's every single yes. 15 minutes. Uh, and then- We have a comment uh, from, yes. from one of our students, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Stella Barrett. Uh, she says, James, to answer your question, the training industry will certainly gain its space as organization will want to upskill and upscale their people. And secondly, mm -hmm. we talk a lot of online and virtual training, but seriously, normalcy will come in and face-to-face -face will happen by next year. Wow. Impact right. is created by engaging and feeling the vibe of the people. So do I see the progress will be uh, slow, but definitely upwards. Anyway, you know, uh, time is upon us. We are approaching the end of our session. Shireen, I don't want to go, but you know, um, <laughs> Yeah, we would like to thank our guest, Edward Chan. It's been so insightful. Uh, thank you so much for all the brilliant input you shared. And most of all, for your time to have a serious discussion with us today. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And thanks to everyone who came, took your time to come to listen to Edward and us. If you have any comments or any questions or even suggestions for us, do let us know. And if you'd like to follow Edward, his social media link is in the comment below. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Having so much fun. <laughs> this is such Hi. a passionate topic for me, you know. Uh, oh, you know I can I speak know. for this like, for hours. <laughs> yeah. I think we, 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 we three and have day tare. All three of us. You know, right? All three of us should meet. You know, all three of us should meet and really go in deep into, uh, you know, what is the way forward, etc. Well, um, I guess that data rate because he looks like the mama shop guy. Hey, I told you not to say that. <laughs> Hi, <-yo>. <laughs> Our next episode of HR Intervention will be two weeks from now, which is the 19th of May, 2021. Same day, same time, same place. Um, and we'll have a really special guest joining us to make sure you know you mark your calendar. Don't forget to connect with us on all our social media platforms. We'll put the links in the comment section, both LinkedIn and Facebook. Facebook. Oh, if you have any training related questions, please drop us an email at training at compassmind.com. Till we see all of you on the next episode, we hope to have more people internationally too. Stay safe, stay kind, stay healthy, and see you Selamat on the next Oh yeah, Bye. subscribe to all celebrating. Hey, uh, James, you want, you want to sing, James? I'm ready. <laughs> oh, good, and James can sing Selamat Hari Raya. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me joke as well. Selamat. Come on, let's all dance. Hari Raya. <laughs> Come on, Shireen. So, till next time, we'll see you guys on the next episode of HR Intervention. Serious Hello. discussions only. Selamat Hari Raya. Bye. Shireen, sing. Sing, Shireen. Sing. Hari Raya. Hari Raya.